So here's my reference image. Um, normally I would be doing this outdoors, but I thought I'd record uh, my plein air process in the studio. Uh, this was a recent hike my husband and I did called the Rockwall Trail. It was super rad and I recommend it. Just make sure you bring bear spray. I know right away I really want to exaggerate that big dark mountain and that narrow strip of ground that it's lit up super bright. So that's what I'll keep in mind as I start to sketch and paint. So I start with a rough pencil drawing. Um, just big, broad, vague details. And now I lay in the wash for the sky. Uh, painting clouds in watercolor isn't super forgiving. The trick is to let the paint do the work for you. So once you wet the paper and apply the pigment, you just sort of have to let it fall where it will. And if you noodle with it too much or start to render, the battle's kind of already lost. So I start working on the background cliff while the paper is still wet so I can get that nice edge bleed and transition between the rock and the cloud. Now I'm uh, blocking in some of the background shadows with my little straight edge brush. Uh, mostly use the same brush for this entire painting. It's pretty versatile. It's a Winsor & Newton three-quarter inch square brush that uh, I got my husband to saw it in half for me so it would fit in my plein air kit. Uh, it's good for large washes and also fine detail when you turn it and use the edge. So a general rule with painting is you, you kind of want to work um, coarse to fine detail. So I'm always looking for the big shapes first and I'll usually start with the um, lightest value of that local color. Uh, so with watercolor you're working light to dark and if you put your dark shapes in a little bit too fast, you kind of risk painting yourself into a corner. So it's good to just kind of go slow and really step back and analyze what you're looking at. You could see from my reference image that this mountain had a lot going on, a lot of layers of um, sedimentary rock. So right now I'm sort of keeping in mind how the light is falling across the mountain itself and then I'm going to paint those um, layers of rock in afterwards. Uh, you're going to see a lot of noodling around here. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to tackle it at this point, um, but I know that if I sort of keep my values light and again don't go too dark too fast, I will have time to hopefully backpedal should I fuck up too badly? Definitely my biggest challenge when doing plein air paintings is to keep things simple because I have a tendency to go a little bit myopic sometimes and get caught up in unnecessary detail, but 99 times out of 100, simpler is better. And unfortunately, simple does not always mean easy. So here I painted out the whole right side of the mountain and I reduced the amount of detail on it significantly and I think it made for a more powerful image in the end. At this point I wasn't totally satisfied with the clouds so I just did another little uh, wash on them to make them just more dramatic and stormy. And then I went in and laid in the shadow color on the glacier. Shadows on ice and snow are often filled with reflective bounce light from the sky, so I kept them fairly saturated. Shadows on ice and snow are like one of my top 10 favorite things in the world to look at. And now I'm pulling the tape off, which is the funnest part of the whole painting. Um, it is immensely satisfying in a way that I cannot completely articulate. So, enjoy.